Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, we are continuing with our theme for this week, the ark. The ark, which was a piece of furniture in the earthly sanctuary which represented the very throne of God. It was in the most holy place of the earthly sanctuary. There was no other piece of furniture in that room except the throne of God, except the ark. And it was where the presence of God was, the Shekinah glory. It was a light in that location above the mercy seat, which was on top of the ark. And we're talking about the ark this week. And our subject for today is the ark and the two tables. The ark and the two tables. Let me uh, make an adjustment here and uh, we'll carry on. All right. Praise the Lord. The ark and the uh, two tables. Now, the throne of God has a foundation. I said the throne of God has a foundation. The, govern of, the government of God has a foundation. And this foundation that sits under the throne of God is God's law, which is the transcript of his character, which is love. And let me say that again. That was a little broken up. The throne of God has a foundation. The government of God has a foundation. And this foundation that sits under the throne of God is God's law, which is the transcript of his character, which is love. I hope we got that. Secondly, it is empty possible to change or remove God's law because it is what God is, which is the foundation and source of everything in the universe, visible and invisible, moral and physical, created and eternal things. God himself his character, his law, is the foundation of it all. It can't be changed or moved or removed. Let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed would be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Now, Lord, open our eyes. Enlighten our understanding as we study the ark and the Two tables help us to understand its meaning and significance in our lives in this present day. Change us, Lord. Make us be your sanctuary. And Lord, sit on the throne of our heart and mind. And then, Lord, the foundation of our character, let it be your love your character, your law. That's the essence of it all. Make it so in us, this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I just want to thank God for uh, a good partner, a, a, a good wife, a, a, a faithful wife who's always there. When, I, when I'm sort of down, she can pick me up and, and encourage me. And uh, when I Nobody else is around. She's around to, 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 to bless me and hold me up. And so I just want to say thank you to my wife, and I want to thank God thank for her. Now, thank God for you too. let's look at some scripture. Exodus chapter 31 and verse 18. What does the Bible say? Now, remember, we're talking about the ark and the two tables. What does the Bible say? And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. All right. Now, 
uh, Moses went up into the mountain at the call of God. He communed with Moses, and he, God gave to Moses what the Bible says are two tables of testimony. Mm -mm. Tables of stone. You heard the saying, written in stone? Well, this is where it comes from. God wrote something in stone. That means it's permanent. That means it can't be changed. That means it can't be moved. It's perpetual. That's what written in stone means. This is the origin of written in stone. God wrote what he is in stone. And furthermore, the Bible says, written with the finger of God. You know, in the whole building of the sanctuary, God used humankind to do it. He didn't literally come down and do anything with his own hand. He used mankind made in his own image. But when it came to the tables of stone, the Bible says it was written with the finger of God. The work was the work of God. The writing was the writing of God. Written with his own finger, the Bible says. And he wrote it in stone. So you'll know it doesn't change. It can't change. It, it won't be moved. It can't be moved. And then it calls it the table of testimony. What, 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 why is it called the table of testimony? I'll tell you why. It's God testifying concerning what he is mm -hmm. and, and who he is and how he is. It's the table of testimony. God explains to you what he is. He's testifying about himself. The law is the transcript of what God is. It's the transcript of his character. Therefore, it's called the table of testimony. It's the testimony of God about himself. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 9, and verses 10 and 11. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone, written, written with, with the, the finger, finger of God. And on them was written according to all the words which the Lord spake with you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days and 40 nights that the Lord gave me the two tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant. All right. In this text, it uh, has a little addition. This is Moses testifying to the people before he should die. And he's recounting... Uh, all of the things God has done for his people and with his people. And he, re and he referred back to the table, two tables of stone written with the finger of God. The two tables are also called the tables of the covenant. The tables of the covenant uh, in the Old Testament or in the Old Covenant. There was a law in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, there is a law. It's the same law. It doesn't change. You see, the covenant is based on conditions. The covenant is based on God's character and God's faithfulness and God's power and God's grace and God's love. The covenant is based on God himself. <clears throat> And so the two tables were actually the tables of the covenant that God would make between himself and his people. Let's, let's, let's make this thing a little clearer. Uh, let's move to Exodus chapter 34 and verse 28. And what does the Bible say? And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant. The Ten Commandments. Oh! <laughs> uh, the words of the covenant. The Ten Commandments. Now, that's just clear. That's clear. You, you, nobody can mistake that. Now, they may not want to agree with it. They may not want it to be the truth. But the covenant is the Ten Commandments. God wrote the Ten Commandments on tables of stone. That's the transcript of his character. God's law is the transcript of his character. God's law is the covenant that he made between himself and his people. Now let's try to pull all of this together so that we can make sense of this. In Exodus chapter 19 and verses 5 through 8, let's, let's pull it all together. What does the Bible say there? Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, 
Then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. All that the Lord has said we will do. <clears throat> Let's pull it together. God says, uh, if, if, starts off with if, if you will obey. Oh, uh, that obedience is so important. Somebody said we didn't have to keep the law anymore. Well, they were wrong. That's the brainchild of the devil. The covenant is the law. Obedience to the law. God says, now, if ye will obey my voice and keep my covenant, we already know that the Ten Commandments is the covenant. It's the words of the covenant. It's the conditions of the covenant. Covenant, And God says, if ye will obey, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people in the earth. And then he goes on to say, and ye shall be a kingdom of priests. That's God's original plan. I want you to know that. Everybody's a priest. That's his original plan. Everybody's a minister. Everybody's a servant. Everybody's a disciple. It's not no big you and a little this person and you just a peon and this one is a, a, a king. And no saw. Not in the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of men, okay. But not in the kingdom of God. Ye shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. But this is based on the covenant between God and mankind. And the condition is you must obey the covenant which is the Ten Commandments. And the, and, and, and the people entered into a covenant with God. When the people said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do, they, they agreed to do what God said. God said, obey, and they said, we will. A covenant is an agreement between two parties based on conditions. The conditions were the law, the two parties were God and his people Israel. So they entered into a covenant. They promised faithfully, faithfully to obey his law. And God said, if you'll do that, if, if, you know, people make claims, but if they're not fulfilling the conditions, their claims are void. Just as simple as that. They feel like they don't have to live obedient. That, that's rampant in the church. You don't have to obey. God understands. We're just sinners. We're just humans. In spite of the fact that God gives power, his power, his person, his presence to enable us to obey, we want to dismiss obedience. We want to feel like we can be saved and live for the devil too. We can be saved while we're slaves to sin. That's a lie. So many, most, believe it. We're just sinners. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall down. And they make light of sin. And they live in sin. And they feel like they're still saved. God says, if you obey, and I will enable you, you to obey. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with, with exceeding joy. That's the God we're talking about. The God that says, be thou perfect. The God that says, ye can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. The Bible that says, if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Let's, 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 let's come up to a different standard, a higher standard. You shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Everybody was to be a priest. Now, they didn't fulfill that. But that was God's plan, and that's God's plan today. All of us are ministers. All of us are teachers and preachers. All of us. All of us. God help us to come up to the standard that, that God has for us. And where was this uh, item, this this, this, these tables of stone, the, the testimony of what God is. Where was it placed? Let's look at it in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. What does the Bible say? At that time the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, 
and make thee an ark of wood. And I will write on the tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. And I made an ark of shittim wood, and hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and went up into the mount, having the two tables in mine hand. And he wrote on the tables, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spake unto you in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me. And I turned myself and came down from the mount and put the tables in the ark, which I had made, and there they be, as the Lord commanded me. The Ten Commandments, written with the finger of God, was to be placed inside of the ark, which represented the throne of God, pointing to the reality that God's government, God's character, God's kingdom is based on his law. It undergirds what God is. It's the revelation of what God is. Moses had gone up to the mountain, gotten two tables of stone from God, written with the finger of God, before he could come down from the mountain, the folk were already in apostasy, worshiping a different God, dancing around this God naked and praising this God, saying that this God is the God who brought him out of Egypt. Moses broke those tables of stone, but he went to make reconciliation for the people with God. God gave him another set. The same words were written on two tables of stone. This time Moses brought up two tables with him just like we're supposed to bring our hearts to the Lord. And he writes his law on our hearts, but we'll get to that in a minute. But these tables of stone, the testimony of what God is, the words of the covenant, the conditions of the covenant, was put inside the ark that undergirded what God is and who God is. and It undergirds the government of God. The government of God is founded on his law. Oh, let's understand how important this is. Now, let's bring it home to us today. What has all this got to do with me? Wherever I am, in my house, in my living room, doesn't matter. Uh, what does it have to do with me? Let's see, Jeremiah chapter 31, in verses 31 to 33, what does the Bible say? Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel uh -oh. and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. I will put my law in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts. That is the new covenant. And that is the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. It's based on the same law. The only difference is where the law is written. In the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, the law was written outside of man. Written on tables of stone. The New Covenant was written inside of man. Written in his mind and on his heart. So, therefore, the law became a part of what man is and he did what he did because of what he was god changed him the law outside of man doesn't work and god illustrated that with the old covenant in the old testament it has to be a part of what you are and so god constructed a, a new covenant he was teaching a lesson and God said, I'm going to put my law not on tables of stone on the exterior, but I'm going to put them inside of you. I'm going to write them in your mind and on your heart so you do by nature the things contained in the law, so that you love the law. You know why? It's a part of what you are. You're not something different and you're fighting to do something that's foreign to you. I'm going to put it in you so that my character is in you. That's what the law is. It's a transcript of God's character. God writes his own character of love 
in you. The new covenant. Here's the way 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 2 and 3 puts it. Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Ye are epistles, ye are the letters of Christ. Written not with ink. What you are is not written with ink. But it's written with the living spirit of the living God. It's written with the ink of the Holy Ghost. And it's not written in tables of stone outside of you or apart from you. But it's written in fleshly tables of the heart. It's written in your mind and on your heart. It's not apart from you. It's what you are now. You, you become a living epistle, a living letter <laughs> written by Christ with the ink of the Holy Ghost. That's beautiful. That's the new covenant. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 7, let's, let's bring this thing back around to the law. What does God say in 1 John 4, 7 and 8? Beloved. Let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. The Bible says God is love. The tables of the testimony is God testifying to what he is and who he is, which is love. That means that the law is the law of love. The law is love. The law is the transcript of what God is. The transcript of his character. It's the law of love. God is love. Now let's just bring it home and make it clear. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 2 and 3. What does God say? By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. And his commandments are not grievous. This is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. You want to know what the love of God is? Keeping God's commandments. It's just too plain. This is the love of God. He's getting ready to explain what the love of God is, that you keep his commandments. You remember God said, if you, if you obey my covenant, if you will obey, then you'll be unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. Then you'll be my people. That's the covenant. Well, God fixes it so that you can really obey the covenant. He doesn't write it on as rules and regulations on the exterior of it. He writes it in you so that you can do it because it's what you are. It's what you want to do. It's, it's what you begin to feel. It's what you begin to do by nature. God has a new covenant. And that's what it's all about, that law that undergirds his throne, that's in the most holy place, in the very throne of God, is the same law, the same character that he writes in you. It's the character that he wrote in mankind when he first created him, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. What does it say? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. The Bible said, we just read it, God is love. God is love. In creation, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. God is love. God made man in his own image. That means that God, man was made with the character of love. That's the way God originally created mankind. 
one man more than one person whose character was love and they procreated and they, they were rulers. God made man in his own image. Man chose to sin. He chose another master. He chose to obey something other than God's original covenant. The law of love. They, 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 they decided to rebel and disconnect themselves from God. And now they must be restored. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 9 and 10. What does it say as far as God's uh, uh, approach to this thing when man disconnected himself from God and broke the original covenant? Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. God is willing to renew you again mm -hmm. after that original image, the character of love, which is the foundation of God's government which is a revelation of what he is. He's, he's love, the, the, the law of God, which is the transcript of his character. Those are the specific details of how love acts and reacts. It, it outlines for you so you don't make a mistake. How love acts if it loves God. That's the first four. And then how love acts and reacts when it loves its fellow man. It's the law of love. It's the transcript of God's character. It's the details of the covenant. And God said, if, if you'll obey it, if you'll obey now. Because when Adam and Eve decided they were going to disobey, they were out of harmony with God. They were subject to death, eternal death. But now that they are renewed, and we also, we have God's life, God's character, God's love. We talked about the ark and the two tables. The testimony, that's what the, uh, the Bible calls it, the testimony. God testifying of what I am. You want to know what I am? Here's the testimony. I'm going to write it with my own hand, with my own finger. It's the revelation of love. It's the transcript of my character. It's what you are to be. Reflections of love. Throughout the whole of the universe, all of the created beings are to be a reflection of love. They love one another. They're selfless. They're, they're like God. They're servants. Everybody is a servant of everybody else. That kind of peace and harmony. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us to know that the law is just not a bunch of rules and regulations we got to force ourselves to keep. But it's the new covenant. It's what God writes in us with the ink of the Holy Ghost so that we do by nature the things contained in the law. We love the law. It's the impartation of God's character into us. Not just rules that we're running about to force ourselves to keep. Let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, such an important truth. Oh Lord, help us to understand that your law, which is your character, your law, which is the testimony of what you are and how you are. Your law, which is the basis of the new covenant. Your law, that is what you write in our hearts and, and in our minds when you fulfill the new covenant in us. Has not been done away with. It undergirds your government. It's the foundation of your throne. It's what you are. And help us to forever remember that when the devil teaches through religious organizations that the law of God has been done away with. It's no longer binding. You just do whatever. Grace will cover you. That's a lie. And help us to know better and live better. Help us to do like God said. If ye will obey my voice indeed. Then you will be a peculiar people unto me. And you will be a kingdom of priests. All of you are ministers. All of you are disciples. All of you are witnesses. All of you are priests. That's what God says. Help us to take our role. Help us not to just be pew warmers in some building. Thinking we can't do nothing. Because we're not the pastor. And we're not the elder. And we haven't been to school. That's a lie. In God. We are a kingdom of priests. 
That's your will. Bless us to fulfill it. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.